Oh my gosh, it's snowing. Do you know what this means? It's time. It is time for my Christmas project. This year for Christmas, I will be recreating Hermione's Yule Ball dress. I chose to do it in blue because pink is not my color. And uh, don't mind that. That probably is what you think it is, but that's not today's project. Here is the pattern that I drafted the other day. Looks a lot like that when it's assembled. This is the satin fabric I'm gonna use for the base of the dress. I ordered these three chiffons at a pack of three. Are you feeling very snuggly, Emmy? Should be very excited later when we get to go play in the snow. I didn't add seam allowance to the pattern, so I added it to the fabric. I cut all the bodice pieces on the bias, which is on a 45 degree angle from the warp and weft. So there's a bit of a stretch on this non-stretch fabric. This helps with shaping since there are no darts. I have been making it a habit to use a fun lining on the inside. Exhibit A, my bell dress. Bell fabric on the inside. But there's a bit of a problem here. See, um, you can see through it. <laughs> so I'm gonna just cut two of this and use that as my lining. Okay, I'm back. There was a brief pause for a snowball fight outside. It was actually not started by me. Ironing should really be done before cutting, but I didn't feel like it, and it wasn't very wrinkled, so I got away with that. I thought I would start with the easiest bodice point, which is the center front. The point, get it? <laughs> is to pin along the stitching line, trying to get the center point to be sharp, and then along the rest. I did this point pinning six times for the bodice and another six times for the lining. I got pretty good at it by the end, but I definitely went back and fixed a few. I stitched along one side of the cup, lifted the presser foot with the needle down to pivot on the point, and continued sewing. Got a little tuck, but I think I could fix that. And I did that seven more times. Then twice for the waist seams. Clipping the seam allowance can help relieve some of the tension for fewer puckers, but be sure not to clip past the seam allowance. I'm going back and fix that. Much better. Now I just gotta do the other one. Here is a very good lesson as to why you should press your seams. This looks kind of atrocious, right? Well, this is before pressing, and this is after. <laughs> Look at all those neat lines. I stitched two cups together at the center. Since I have two of these, I have matched up the prettiest cups and the prettiest middle, and then we have the second best and the second best as the lining. I pinned the cups piece to the rest of the bodice, doing that same point technique again. It was much easier to know where to leave the needle down because there's a seam there. Good morning! Today we have lots of really lovely snow and no heat. So if I can find my tiny space heater, I may sew today, but if I can't, then I'm gonna go hide by the fireplace. Good morning, and we have heat again. Although very recently, I was complaining that it was almost 90 in here. Anyway, I put a poll up on Instagram the other day about what Emmy's matching costume should be, and Luna's Christmas dress won. So I was poking around looking for fabrics, and I found the perfect fabric, but it is silk, and um, this is for my dog. <laughs> she kind of likes to roll in the mud, so I'm not sure I really want to buy silk fabric for her. I was also way more productive the other night than I was expecting, and I have two of the front, and the back is ready to be assembled, but that'll take two seconds. And then the top will basically be done. I'm gonna wait on the straps until I've figured out all the flounces for the bottom, since they have to match, and I might be dyeing them. I quickly stitched the side seams, and was careful to match those lower waist seams. I will be stitching the bodice and the lining here, here, and here, but not here for the straps. I also left little gaps for the back of the straps. I gave this a good ironing and it was done! Until I make those straps later. Or will I? What do you think, Amy? It's actually not time to cut this out yet. Oops. I forgot to mark where the line where the ruffles stop before cutting it, so I had to set it all back up again. 
This is a rather important line. I literally have one pin left. <laughs> but it is time to take Emmy to her haircut. You going to the spa, Emmy girl? Emmy, you look lovely. Do you feel lovely or do you feel tortured? It's really good thing that I bought four yards of fabric because this is all that's left. There are 20 pieces to this dog bed. I mean skirt. 10 layers with left and right each. Time for some flounces! I need a bigger cutting mat. I need a bigger cutting mat. I drew a long sort of C shape and measured out how wide I wanted the ruffle to be. This later became a donut shape, but for the first few layers, it needed to be longer than the fabric width allowed, which was definitely something I should have checked before buying it. Your butt's on camera now. I also labeled them to reduce confusion later, and then repeated this nine more times for 20 ruffles. I should have mentioned that the fabric is folded here, so two ruffles per cut. The smaller these circles are, the flouncier the ruffles are, but I didn't want to piece together too many layers, so they get flouncier as you go up. All of the ruffles are now cut, and it is time to dye. I used synthetic blue and a hint of purple for periwinkle. Checking the dye versus a wet sample, since fabric is slightly darker when wet. That's a nice top layer blue. Now for the medium blue. Maybe I won't hit the vent hood this time. All of my ruffles are ironed and laid out to be sorted again, and I just realized I forgot to cut and dye the arm ruffles. Good thing I didn't throw the pot out yet. I have a little bit left for that, so I think it'll be fine. Good morning! Back to work on the Harry Potter in the year that everyone needed a haircut dress today. This is more of the gradient that I was picturing when I ordered the fabric. Uh, and today I'm going to set up my serger with blue thread and hem all of these. This thing totally hypnotizes me when I hem a lot of fabric. Not like cluck like a chicken hypnotized, but I zone out and completely forget what I was doing after a while. You get to skip ahead on this, but it took forever. I transferred the ruffle start mark to the fabric and got to pinning. I did start with layer 9 since for layer 10 I had to work around the hem that didn't exist yet. My plan was to pin a bunch of these and then batch sew them, however I'm out of pins, so I guess the first few layers I will not be batch sewing. I feel like Rudolph is having a bad day. I used the long stitch length to temporarily hold the flounces in place. I also re-labeled everything again which was very helpful later. Since the camera decided to focus on my ring, I'd like to share that I got the first fabric for my wedding dress today, and I am so excited. It's gonna be great. Tune back in this summer to see that. I was kind of expecting this pile to be bigger because I have been sewing on these flounces for so long, but we're done. Except for number 10, which I guess I should do now. That's a lot of flounces. You're very lucky this has no pins in it. And that I love you. No shredding on the dress, please. I was gonna start pitting the top, but uh, I guess I'll start with the bottom. I started pinning at the ruffle marks. There was just so much pinning here. Ta-da! 17 more to go. There was so much skirt. Too many seams. I stitched the whole thing and ran out of bobbin thread a foot and a half in. <laughs> Maybe Emmy's right and it is time for a break.
Why is this skirt so big? I've been sewing the layers together for like hours. <laughs> uh, I'm like 70%? No. I have a dog. I have one, one skirt is, one half of the skirt is sewn together and the other half is like maybe a third sewn together. It's too big. <laughs> the skirt halves are sewn together? I really want to surge these seams that you cannot see. This machine is set up to do a narrow rolled hem, which is not the stitch that I want. But this machine is just snapping threads all over the place, so it needs a little work. So, since I don't want to re-thread this one, I have to make the ruffle sleeves before I can re-thread that with white. I cut straps not on the bias and got my bias tape maker. Uh, that's not right. <laughs> Let me try that again. Round two was fine. Why do my disappearing ink pens always disappear? I tried to vary the length of this ruffle to drape nicely around my shoulders. More flounce cutting, more hemming, you know the drill. Good morning! I have about one full day's worth of work left on this dress. However, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to do all of that because tomorrow is Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes, I did start this in November. I was just excited. I ran a basting stitch on the strap side of the ruffle just to keep it from stretching. I marked my strap length with my reappearing pen and sandwiched the flounce in there. Now, just stab myself. And ta-da! A fancy strap! I just top stitched this. I'm sure there was a fancier way I could have done this, but I was so close to finishing this project. I pinned the strap into position from the outside before pinning it from the inside and stitching those holes closed. I surged everything with my hypnotic device. I ironed all 18 seams. And finally it's time to sew the center front seam! I matched up all the seams, and since this was cut on the bias, there's a little bit of stretch if they weren't perfect. That is pretty darn good for seam matching. After double checking which was the outside, I pinned the bodice to the top of the skirt. I forgot to film the zipper for the bodice. Sorry. This is a little deceptive because it looks like it's done, but it's still completely open in the back and needs a hem. But I have Thanksgiving things to do, so it's gonna have to wait for now. But I love it! It looks so good! It is after Black Friday now, and I did make two separate wedding-related Black Friday purchases, so you're not going to see that for a long time. Today I'm going to probably finish this. There isn't that much left to do. It's just the back seam, the hem, and the lining. Cutting off some excess ruffle. Matching up the back seams. I like to hand base zippers in, and wow, that pin went flying. Invisible zipper feet are very good at invisible zippers. Shocking, I know. I sewed the rest of the back closed. And hand sewed in the lining. Obviously, I had to make a matching ornament. The lining is all sewn in, and the dress is entirely done except for the hem. But it is W-A-L-K time. So, we might have to take a break. Put on her Christmas bandana. It's reversible. This is the other side but usually it belongs on the naughty side. That night I did a double fold hem and top stitched it. I also added a few tacking stitches to keep these ruffles away from the zipper. Uh, it's really not noticeable unless you're really looking for it. It's done! And I have a little bit of this blue satin left for uh, other things. I used my dress scraps to make a fleur de la cor cape for Emmy. If you want to see how I made it, drop a comment below and I'll make its own video because this video is way too long already. Now for the part you've been waiting for!
hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had to move inside because it is uh, maybe 30 degrees out Fahrenheit and uh, that's just too cold for a dress like this. So if you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe, and maybe check out this Umbridge costume that I made last year. Bye everybody! Good girl, come on. It's really cold out.